Hey everyone, it's John, and today what we're going to be doing is continuing back on the Key Concepts video series where I take some IP written key concepts and break them down to give you a broad overview to help supplement your textbooks. Okay, so in this video, what we're going to be doing is focusing on the first two and the strongest two BGP path attributes, and that is weight and local preference. This is a good one, so let's kick on. Let's do it. Okay, so let's dig in then, shall we? So the first BGP path attribute which I want to talk to you about is weight. Now weight is the strongest and most influential BGP path attribute. However, it's only got significance to the local router in which it is configured. So whilst it has complete precedence on that router, it will not affect any of the calculations of the other routers. Out with the AS, within the AS, it doesn't matter, it will not have effect on their calculations. Now, the interesting part, or the bizarre part, the weird part, is that this can still actually have effect on the path which other routers are taking. You're going to see that now. I understand that probably sounds like a contradiction. It probably makes no sense. But hopefully when you see the demonstration, it's actually going to become a little bit clearer as to what I mean by that. So it won't affect their calculations, but it can actually affect the path they take. Now, the way I like to conceptualize this, and I don't know if this is a good analogy or a crude analogy, but I like to think of that... BGP with weight, BGP is very insecure about its weight. It doesn't want to tell anyone else about the weight, it keeps it to itself, but weight is very, very important to BGP, okay? So that will be the deciding factor. You can change bandwidth, local preference, AS path, all these things. If you set the BGP weight the highest, doesn't matter, forget about it. BGP is going down that path because weight matters the most. Now, prefixes that the router originates have a default weight of 32,768. And it's very important to note that BGP prefers higher values when it comes to weight. The higher the weight, the more influential, the more preferential that path is. Now, the second BGP path attribute, which I want to discuss with you, is called local preference. And that is the second strongest BGP path attribute. Now, it's important to note with local preference, it only has significance within the autonomous system. So, whilst weight can be used to influence a single router's decision, Local preference can be used to influence all the routers within an AS's decision, but you cannot use local preference to influence BGP routers' decisions in a different AS. So think of local preference as local AS preference. If you set the local preference for a, a higher value, because higher values are more important or more preferential, should I say, that's going to take effect throughout the entire AS, but you can go into a single router and configure that to have a higher weight and it can actually have a different path compared to the rest in the AS because weight still outweighs, excuse the pun, local preference. Now local preference is a default value of one and just like weight, higher values are preferred. So if you set the local preference to be 120, suddenly that's higher than the default, therefore this path is going to be preferred and we're going to see that. Now there's a fair chance that this isn't making much sense, so I think if you look at some configurations this will make things a lot lot clearer, so how about we do that then? Okay, so what do we actually have here? Now if you look at the right hand side of your screen, I've actually written out the BGP best path selection algorithm. Now the two ones which you can see at the top, those are the two most important ones and those are the two we're focusing on today. So weight is the most important one and a higher weight is better than lower weight. And same again with local preference, a higher local preference is better than a lower local preference. Now what about the actual topology here? Let's just imagine that we are the administrator of a company called IPv0 Solutions. Now IPv0 Solutions has two ISPs which it can use to get out to the world and acting as the kind of rest of the world is AS99. Let's just say that's a, a remote AS somewhere and it's advertising a bunch of networks. 66, 66, 66.1, 77, 77.1, so on and so forth. Now what we're going to see here is, is that router 2 here is going to take the top path to get to these networks and router 3 here is going to take the bottom path, the second ISP to get to those networks. So let's just look at that first. So if we go up to router 2 first and we do a show IP BGP. Now, this little icon here, this little carrot, that denotes the best path. Now if we look at the path to say 99, 99.99.99.1 we're going to see that we've got two paths, okay? But the one we prefer is the one which is connected to us. The next hop is 20.002, and that is this path here, okay? Which makes kind of sense. 
And if we go down to router 3, we're going to see the inverse of that effectively. So if we do our enable show IP BGP, let's look at say for example 88.88.88.1. We've got two paths, but our preferred path is across the next hop of 50.002, which is this path down here. So this kind of makes logical kind of intuitive sense. But what we're going to do is manipulate that first with local preference and see how that actually affects the path decision process. So what I'll do first is actually do a trace from router 3 and see what path it's taken. Just to confirm, okay, so I'll do it to the 99 network. And we'll do it from the source of the loopback, all the threes. And you can see that we're actually going through the 50 network and the 160 network, which is the 50 network and the 160. So we're definitely taking the bottom path. Now let's say we actually wanted to influence all the routers within the AS of IPv0 solutions. We could use local preference because local preference has effect throughout the AS and we could influence that to make sure that all the routers prefer the top path through ISP1. Now it's important to note the direction in which I'm going to be applying the local preference. You apply it inbound because you take it from routes coming into you and you effectively tag them with that local preference as they come in. If I try to do it outbound, that would be like me trying to affect everything in AS20. Now, local preference only has influence within your own AS, so router 2 would have no success trying to implement that outbound towards AS20. So let's just do that for all the routes coming in. So if we just simply do a route map, and we'll just call it map and permit 10 is the sequence number, and all we'll do is, is just set the local preference to 120, so higher than 100 effectively. And we'll also just do this for good measure. Root map, map, permit 20. A good wee habit I've got. Now, what I'm going to do is apply this to my neighbour. So my neighbour here is 20.0.0.2, which is this interface here, and I'm going to be applying it for routes it sends to me inbound, okay? So if I do router BGP, go into my process, my AS rather, of 10, and I say for neighbor 20.0.0.2, apply the route map called map in the inbound direction. Now if I just clear my BGP stuff here by doing a clear IP BGP soft, what I'm going to see is that if I now do a show IP BGP, we're actually going to prefer the next hop of 20.0.0.2 for all of these networks, okay? Now that doesn't really make much of a revelation to you because this router was already preferred in the top path, but what you can see here now is that we've actually modified this value here for the local preference. Now, like I say, this is actually going to have effect throughout the AS, so let's see how the other routers view that path now. So let's first go to router 5. And if we do a show IP BGP, we can see that the next hop for all these networks is 2.2.2.2. And if we do a show IP BGP 99.99.99.1. Oh, type it right. We can see that definitely the best path is going through router 2, which is the top path. Now let's have a look at say router 1. Yep, again, it's preferring the next hop of 2.2.2.2 because the local preference is 120, which is higher. And same again, is this router also preferring the top path now? Yep, exact same here. Now the interesting one, number three also will still prefer that top path because like I say, it's going to have effect throughout the AS. So it can see both paths, but look at where the best path is, this little carrot. The best path in this case here, you see it there, is through 2.2.2.2. Same again for this one, the best path is through 2.2.2.2, 2.2.2. And if we actually trace, do that same trace again, um, if we just arrow up, we're going to take a different path now. You see that? We're actually going through the 20 network and the 135 network, which is we're going across this way and this way and across the 20 in the 135 network because, like I say, the local preference scope affects the entire local AS. Okay, so we've used local preference to successfully manipulate all the routers within our AS to take the top path through ISP1 for all destinations. Now let's add some more context to this. Let's actually imagine 
the ISP2 was actually the better ISP, the faster ISP and the more expensive ISP. So it made sense for us to route most traffic through ISP1 because it was cheaper. However, let's say we identify network 77, 77.1 as a really crucial destination for us. We didn't want to have any kind of delay and we identify ISP2 as the better ISP to send traffic to that particular network. We could do local or use local preference to actually influence all the routers to say, but for that particular network, the 77 network, go through ISP2. So let's do that now then, okay? So if we go in here and we actually create a prefix list and say IP prefix list, we'll just call it list and we'll permit the 77, 77, 77.1 slash 32. Now if we create a route map and we just call it say map two in the sequence number of 10 and we match the IP address specified in the prefix list oh, called list and what we'll do is we'll set the local preference to something higher so we need an even higher local preference to override the top ISP for this prefix so we'll do 150 this time and then we'll do a root map a map to permit 20 okay now we need to apply that inbound on this way coming from ISP2 so when ISP2 sends a prefix it's going to be tagged with the 77 network will be tagged with a local preference of 150, which will then propagate throughout the AS and everyone should take the bottom path for that particular prefix. So let's go into router BGP and we do neighbor, oh, if I can type that right, 50002, and we'll save root map called map to inbound, okay? And if we clear our IP BGP softly, if we now do show IP BGP, we're going to see that actually we're still going through 2.2.2 for 66, we're still going through 2.2 for 88, we're still going through 2.2 for 99, but in fact for 77 we're going back through the bottom path again, so if we actually trace to that, we trace to the 99 we go to the top path, okay, and if we trace to say the 88, we still go the top path, but if we go to 77, we'll take the bottom path because we've now got a higher local prevalence for that particular prefix. We're going the bottom path, we're going through 50 and 160 for that one again, so we're going down here and here. And again, because it's local prevalence, what's it going to do? It's going to have effect throughout the AS, so the same will be true for this one. If we do show IP BGP, it's going to prefer the top path for 66 for 88 and 99 but look for 77 it wants to go through route 3 because see that local preference is 150 local preference is winning out for this one and again the same is true even for router 2 if we do a show IP BGP also for 77 it too also wants to go through 3.3.3 .3 so if we do a trace to the 99 network source 2.2 .2, we'll take the top path through 20 and 135. The same would be true for 88 and 66, but if we do it for the one we identified, the 77, or rather trace that, should I say. We're going to take the longer path through ISP2 now. See that, going through 50 and 160 because the local preference is affecting all of the routers within the local AS. So let's imagine we had a network of 100 routers and we could use local preference to influence all 100 routers to take a particular path decision. This would be very efficient and very quick. However, let's just imagine that for say five of those routers out of the 100, we did not want that policy to apply. What we could do would be to actually apply the weight path attribute and give it a higher weight to override the local preference because weight is actually more influential than local preference because if we just tried to use a higher local preference on those five routers we're again going to be affecting the whole AS because the scope applies to the entire autonomous system with weight however it only applies to that router locally so let's just try and do that just now so in the case right here router 2 is actually going to take 
the bottom path through router 3.3.3.3 to go to the 77 network. Let's just say we want every router to go to the 77 network via the bottom ISP, but we don't want that to apply to router 2. Let's override the local preference of 150 by creating a higher weight. Now you can actually do this the same way with local preference via a prefix list and just target particular networks. What I'm going to do is just make it apply to all advertisements from ISP1. So router 2 will always prefer ISP1 for every single prefix. So let's just go in here and do router BGP10 and we'll do our neighbor 20002 and we'll say the weight. We're going to give it 50,000. And if we do a oh, clear IP BGP soft, and do our show IP BGP. What you can see is that now for the 77 network, our little arrow is here and we're again going over the 20002 because the weight is actually 50,000. So if we actually trace to that network again from our loopback of all the twos, we're now going to take the top path again. But if we look at the actual bottom routers, or not the bottom routers, the routers below, should I say, <laughs> they're still going to be taking the bottom path because the actual weight is only going to affect router 2's decision. So show IP BGP, you can see we're still preferring the bottom path and if we trace to the 77 from our source of all the ones, we're going to be going through the bottom path of the 50 and the 160 which is down here and across here. And if we go to router 4, that's going to take the bottom path also. Just trace to the 77 with the source of the loopback. It's taking the bottom path also because like I say, the weight is only having an effect on router 2. Now here's the interesting part, remember at the start of the video I said that the weight will only have effect locally with a router's calculation, but it can actually affect other router's paths even with that. This is what's going to happen, let's look at router 5, okay, this is the interesting one. So if I do a show IP BGP, for the 77 network, it still thinks it's going to go through router 3, okay? because that's where the local preference is. But watch what happens when we actually trace to it. With the loop back of all the fives. It's actually going through the top path. And the reason why is that the only way it can get to router three is through router two. And what is router two doing? Router two says anything that's been advertised via ISP one is gonna have a higher weight. So this thinks it's gonna go to router three, but as soon as it hits router two, it's just bam, it's just gonna shoot across because the weight is overriding it. So even though the weight is actually not propagating to router 5, it's actually influencing router 5's path because it is directly connected to router 2, which is a router with a higher weight, and the higher weight is overriding absolutely everything. Okie doke, so let's do a recap. Okay, so weight is the strongest and most influential BGP attribute. However, it only has local significance to the router. That said, as we just seen there, it can actually have effect out with the router given that even though another router might not calculate the weight or be affected by that weight, should it have to traverse a router that has a higher configured weight, we can have some unpredictable paths taken. So just be aware of that. Now also, prefixes that the router originates will have a default value of 32,768. And should you want to alter that to make it more preferable, higher values are preferred with weight. Now, local preference is the second strongest BGP attribute. It only has significance within the local autonomous system. You can't use AS or local preference to affect things outside of the AS, should I say. So think of local preference as local AS preference. And it's got a default value of 100 and higher values are preferred just like weight. So that's the end of the video. Thanks very much. I'll see you guys soon.